Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Mind High's podcast. Uh, this week, it's a special one because we got a guest. It's just me today with my special guest today, Faisal. Faisal is my uh, business partner, and he's also got his own kind of organization and stuff like that, which you know we can talk about a little bit. And uh, today, uh, yeah, it's going to be different, but it's going to be good. And I think, Faisal, you're going to give bring a flavor that well, we haven't got before. And... Um, uh, like, uh, you know, I made the mistake in the past, yeah, of like ha- having too much of an interview vibe. So this mm-hmm. time I'm fighting that. Inshallah, we're going to have a good, just a conversation and we have a good topic in mind, I think. Uh, but yeah, welcome, Faisal. How's it going? Awesome. Uh, yeah, good. Very good. Thank you. How's, uh, I don't, I, I, you know what, bro, I, I, I want to ask you like, about like being stuck at home and all that. But I feel like, you know, like in a year when people are listening to these, they're going to be like, every episode you have to mention it. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, but I think life's not too, too, too different for you. No, uh, that's it. It's, it's, it's yeah. crazy. Um, obviously, a lot of the conversations I've been having recently, oh, yeah. It's like they're talking about a different world. Oh, my God, like the world yeah. before COVID and the world after COVID kind of thing. Yeah. And I was like, what? I, I can't really notice, notice the difference. Obviously, the only difference is that everyone's morale is kind of, Right, and all that kind of stuff. But I'm the yeah. like, for, for myself, it's, I've been kind of working at home, kids running around in the, in the back and stuff. Yeah, uh, so I'm the, yeah, that's the, it's, it's, a, it's, it's quite good in the sense that there's not really been too much disruption. But yeah. obviously, they had yeah. the disruption in terms of going out, and I, I never really went out too much anyway. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> alhamdulillah, okay, good. So, um, I want to start the episode off with this thing, yeah, which is like. Uh, last episode, alhamdulillah, it was actually me and Kaya who did that episode talking about business and, and kind of what it's like, uh, you know, just uh, what's the reality of running a business, stuff like that. And um, I got a comment on the, on the YouTube channel, which I, I thought when I read it, you know, it's one of those ones, honestly, it like it hit me in the feels, bro. Yeah, <laughs> because, <laughs> because. Um, it's like you want a virtual hug. Yeah, I know that feel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, it's, it's the opposite. Um is it was uh, not a nice feeling right because they were saying and this is the thing where it's like i take the feedback seriously when exactly when this type of thing is said so they said yeah. you know i love the podcast i'm a long time listener um and i re- i love all of your episodes but in this one you your attitude was just like off your attitude kind of stank yeah um uh, and and i was oh yeah i'm really i'm trying to and the funny thing is is that when i was put, like putting the episode together like after we recorded i was like uh, there was a comment I made in it and I thought that's not a good thing to say. Right. Mm. Um, but then I have this uh, dilemma of, should I leave it in or not? Like, should I be real w- along, you know, because along with my mistakes and stuff, um, or should, you know, it's not, if you can avoid, you know, sharing your kind of sins or your mistakes, that's best as well. So I don't know what to do. Right. But basically what well, the gist of what um, she was saying was that uh, you sounded very like arrogant um, because I think of uh, two main comments yeah, that I made, so I want, I want you to like, uh, you know, for you to kind of chime in on, on what you think. So the first one I said was, uh, I was talking about employing people in business is very difficult, right? Because you find yeah. a lot of bad people in the end, people that either they, they, don't, they don't put the effort, they say they've got skills that they don't, uh, they require a lot of explanation for them to do something. And then it's like you have to teach them from scratch every time or whatever, right? And obviously me and you, we employ people together now. We've employed people uh, over the years, you know, and I think, you know, we probably, thanks to you, we found good people a lot of the time, right? We had some bad people, of course, but we we probably have a better track record than most people, right? So uh, that was the first comment. I was just saying most people are mediocre. Okay, that's the, I said that most people are mediocre. And then the other comment I said is something about, um, you know, well, like if you, if you had a cafe, you could like not be in the cafe working every single day if you could find people who weren't like morons. Yeah. <laughs> so that was a comment I wanted to edit out. Like I thought, I generally thought that was bad, but I left it in. So yeah, what do you think, bro? Should I be concerned or? Yeah. Yeah, I think there's two things. I, I was laughing at when you mentioned both comments because obviously, Hamza, I, I know you very well. And it's actually exactly the kind of thing you would you would say. So I think you did the oh, right man, thing. Oh, man, expose me. I think, I think it's the right thing to leave in. But I think uh, just to um, give some context around it, uh, but, but like you're very, as from what I know about you, is that you're very sort of 
straight to the point. You're very, the, the way you think is very different. So it's not, a lot of this stuff is not coming from a place of, of arrogance. It's very matter of fact. It's like, look, they're the facts. I don't really want to sugarcoat. I don't really want to sort of, you know, um, be you know, mindful of hurting people's feelings, etc. Because that's that's just a reality, right? Let's just deal with the facts, and we can get we can get on with it. Yeah. And so, so you've always kind of been that that kind of person. And I'm gonna like this in in business for most part that, that's it's always been uh, it's actually one of your strengths because so, like we could be you know, how many times have we been like bogged down in like in like long meetings and you know everyone's saying their point and stuff and sometimes you're you you you've got this unique ability to distill it to its purest form right this is look guys i this is all nonsense this is what what the issue is let's just deal with it and move on mm. and actually it's, it's really good because it, it it moves things along and and everyone it sort of can snap out of it I think um, where you have to be mindful is that it's obviously one size doesn't fit all. And yeah. this is where having that, um, I guess, emotional intelligence or having that ability to to understand that, okay, not everyone can hear that stuff. And so, and being able to adapt and move. And so that's probably where... Of course. Um, but, but, but the truth of it is that this is, I guess this is why the topic that you've chosen today is quite relevant because um, the question is, is that, is it is it as simple as oh this is who I am and you know learn love me or leave me kind of thing or mm. is it oh, I can I, I should be able to adapt and I, I should change I mean that's, yeah, that's yeah. the question really isn't well, it well you know the things I said do you think that's true like just in a factual way in so the factual the first the first point was most uh, people are mediocre people. yeah <laughs> so again the context you you meant it in is what yeah. in the hiring world this what I mean, yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, then, and, and it could also be um, re re uh, relevant to your experience when you were hiring all the applicants. Remember, I remember the applications that you went through and stuff. Yeah, a lot of them they were like average, or they, they weren't things that you'd say, "Oh my God, this mm. is my world of class," or "I need to yeah. kind of jump up to those things." But yeah. so that might yeah. be relevant, true in your experience. Mm. Um, so I think that that you could say that is the case. But I, what about you, bro? Like you hired no, a lot no, no, of people. I, I, the, 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 the way I think is that is a little bit different. To be fair. Okay. Um, I think that, look, um, most people, right, everyone has got a unique ability of some kind, mm. right? And so, okay, so uh, let's say I'm, ha I'm hiring someone to do ads for me and their application, I look at it, I might look at it and think, okay, yeah, you know, that was a, that was a great application, but yeah. actually, you know what, they, might, they actually might be really good at something else, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah. but, and, and so uh, but again, we might come to the same conclusion, this guy's not right for us. Yeah, but it's just I guess the the train of thought and stuff. Mm. Uh, that, that, that but we do, you know, uh, uh, is this true? Yeah, because in my experience, it's been like it's not actually. My, I guess it's my experience mixed with other things. You know, that you just hear and stuff. Um, it's like out of a hundred applications, fifty would just not have even filled the thing in properly, innit? Yeah. So yeah, that, that's what I mean by mediocre. I'm not saying. Uh, if, if somebody is, is good at something, even if it's not mm. what they're applying for, they're not mediocre, right? They're good. They're good at yeah, something. Yeah. 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 But, I, I, again, what, yeah. yeah. But I, I think, you know what it is? Language is powerful and yeah. it's so nuanced that mm. one person listening to it will take something completely different yeah. from the other person. And yeah. so that's why, to, um, why I guess it might have uh, hit a nerve for you mm. is because. I, First thing you had to say the truth or something like that. Maybe something that was in your mind already that or you've heard it before, etc. Yeah. And so you know, okay, you know, it was a bit sensitive. But mm. the truth of it is, is that like when I when I when, when I heard it, again, my, my initial thing was to laugh because first of all, I know you and I know like again, I know you, the how what kind of context you would have meant it in. It's not an arrogant sort of position. Mm. <laughs> so all it's yeah. very just like you you're very again, just like I said, matter, matter of fact is how I would describe you. Mm, yeah okay uh, yeah the reality yeah i was uh, thinking the about, thing about it the whole, yeah. the whole thing about the morons thing yeah. again everyone can you you can, you can maybe disagree with the, the language used and this and that but um you know in the day how i mean if you were to uh, reword that and stuff i mean uh, if you had that time again uh, you, you you said that you were thinking of editing it out and uh, what would you do you wish you have said I just wish I didn't say. I would have not said it. I guess. Okay. 
Yeah, and, and, and I think that's the thing. Obviously, you're in in, the, in this kind of environment, you're comfortable. You kind of just say what kind of comes to your mind and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, I I, I think um, um, I think it's genuine. It's 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 good feedback just uh, because you're someone with uh, influence. You've got a, a you know a, a listening audience and you know, people who might who may look up to you and stuff. So I I do understand that kind of uh, hikmah and that that wisdom that okay, you know what, maybe when your position. It could things could be misread and things like that. Yeah. But but you know is also but but having said that, people also like maybe that's why why they subscribe to you. Yeah, that's like the tr- that's the tricky and that's the thing. Bit, yeah. so, it's like, I, so do you embrace who you are, mm. or do you just be the guy in vanilla? I don't want to really offend anyone. I don't really. I, I need to. Be, yeah, I think you know. Sometimes when I, uh, I mean, if you if you hear any of the p- previous episodes, yeah, on some topics that you know you, people are uh, polarized around, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm very straight about what I believe, uh, what I th- like, what I genuinely think is right. Yeah, um, I'll say that straight, and I know some people are going to oppose it or be upset, and I don't mind that because I genuinely think it's it's right. Yeah, but with this, it's like yeah. no, it's wrong to just talk like that, or like say morons and this and that. Like that's not good. Like that's <laughs> yeah. not like it's not encouraged. You know. So uh, yeah, yeah, I, 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 yeah. yeah. I, 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 what I would say is that, is that it's actually that's not really of you. I've not uh, you, I've not really heard you be very like um, yeah castigating and stuff like that in, in the past. So yeah, it's, uh, yeah maybe yeah. it's just uh, uh, yeah. Freudian slip. But it, <laughs> well, if it's Freudian slip, then <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But alhamdulillah, is good because I think online you you rarely get this kind of feedback, bro. Most yeah, of the feedback is yeah, like 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 yeah, great episode, yeah, which is nice. It's nice to know you're on the right track, but. Then you uh, and then you just get like the kind of negative feedback that you can't even take seriously, and it's really good to get that middle ground where it's like, um, you know, I've taken the time to think about what, criticism. yeah, constructive, genuinely constructive criticism. Like I actually listen to your words, and no, I think you're wrong on this. And then you could take that seriously, and that's why you know me. This was a reminder to me that uh, I personally, you know, since I was a teenager, I I feel. Although I always remember lacking confidence, I also remember having potential, seeing myself having potential issues with arrogance, you know? And mm. so for me, it's like a bit of a wake up call. And I'm really grateful for this comment, you know, because it was yeah. worded in the right way for me to take it seriously. And th- that's good. So Alhamdulillah, that, that's kind of a blessing to me. It's like that somebody gave you a wake up call. And um, yeah. I, can, I, have, I can find tons of ways to defend myself you know, for saying what I said and all that. Um, and maybe that would be right. You know, maybe I'd be right in the end, but that's not going to benefit me as much as the in- introspection in it that 100%. I kind of flopped. 100%. So it, it's good, bro. It's honestly well, good. Yeah, what, what's really, really interesting is that I was listening to this talk once and it was, it, it was actually talking about, it was the talk was called, it was actually called Know Yourself. So it was all about knowing yourself and all that kind of stuff. Mm. And it was talking about the different sort of personality types, um, so yeah, you know, you've heard the four temperaments, uh, choleric and sanguine and all that kind of stuff. Uh-huh, and so uh-huh. it was talking about all of those things and, and it, throughout history and, you know, how, you know, even the uh, kind of Islamic scholars exp- you know, expanded, you know, that, that uh, principle further, etc. But what I'd never heard before is that they linked the f- to each temperament to the four virtues. So okay. there's, there's four different virtues, right? Um, uh, there's one, there's wisdom, there's temperance, there's justice, and there's courage, right? Mm. So these are like four, and, and so and obviously each. And so What's the thing temperance that, mean? Temperance means um, being good natured, being balanced, not okay. getting too angry and aggressive and things like that. Being okay. you know being very, mm. um, so being very, like calm. Um, calm, yeah, calm, yeah. yeah. That's, that's the yeah. that's the way it. Level headed, so, yeah. Level headed, yeah, exactly. Yeah, just able to digest and process mm. and. Yeah, yeah, and act uh, in okay. a really good spirit and stuff. Yeah. So, uh, and what this was quite, what was quite interesting was that, that it was like he he linked the which whatever personality type you are to a virtue because obviously, uh, and the thing that, uh, for example, if you are as let's say, a choleric, which is the um, the kind of hot one, which is that like, you know very mm. very extroverted and it's like it's like mm. it's summer and stuff. Um, your, 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 the virtue that you're most close to is mm, courage. courage. Yeah. And you're out there, you're going for it and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But then, but then, if you get courage wrong, you could go too far in the sense that 
you go, you, you basically, uh, you become an extreme uh, like oppressor. Yeah, or... yeah, you become reckless or oppressor, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And if, if you're too little on courage, okay. then you become a bit like mellow and or you, you, you don't apply it. Just yeah. So, so is, the, uh, is the idea that you can't excel in the, all four virtues? No, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. No, it's, it's actually you're predisposed towards one personality type. Mm. And, that, and that's, one, that's one thing that's interesting is that you can't actually change the person, your personality type. You can't right. like, really, I can become more like, no, no, this is who you are. Yeah. But being aware of it actually really, really helps because it's like, okay, you're right. So I know that I'm more predisposed to courage. I'm, I'm not afraid to act. But that yeah. means that I'm probably um, um, not as te temperamental or no, no, I don't have temperance as much as mm. I should. Yeah, so I, that's yeah. what I need to work on. Right? Yeah. And so, uh, but also, you, you, I might be, exp I might be prone to certain sins yeah. more than I am with others. So, yeah, so yeah, yeah. That's why it's really, really interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wait. So, what are those four virtues again? Um, courage, temperance. Yeah, courage, temperance, um, wisdom, mm. and justice. Interesting. Okay. So, uh, what, what, what yeah. was really interesting is that the last mm. thing that uh, there was in the talk, he linked these four virtues to the four Sahaba. So he said that Hazrat Umar uh, mm. was the guy of courage, mm. and Hazrat uh, Ali was a, a sort of, of wisdom, okay. and uh, Hazrat Osman was known to be very temp calm and, and things like that. And okay. Abu, uh, Abu, Abu Bakr had the justice. Okay. Yeah, and and so um, and, and the Prophet yeah, so, Salam had all four. I, uh, oh yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly that. And so, but then what, what he was saying was that the greatest of all of these virtues. It's actually justice because if you don't apply the others enough, mm. you don't actually get to justice and stuff. So it was, it was, just, it was amazing how it all came right. together. And it was really, I, really, really good that kind of flopped it for me, man. I thought it's supposed to be like all equal, four equal ones, like uh, no one is better than the other. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think uh, I could see myself. Uh, I mean, I, I don't have examples of this, but I think I would be actually weak in courage. Because, because of how level-headed I, I am, or I, something. The rest of the the cat, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's like without that passion, and the, yeah. sometimes you have to do irrational things to to be brave, right? To do mm. courageous things, right? You have to yeah. throw yourself into the you know Head into the enemy the crowd or whatever, you know. Absolutely. And yeah. and I, I always I sometimes think about this like. I can't see myself doing that because I'm just too logical, man. Like it, sometimes mm. it, it, it kind of messes with you, but then you just realize that you, you are how you are sometimes. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe wisdom is actually your, your one. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, maybe. So maybe wisdom could be your because it's like intellect and it's about thinking, okay, what's the right thing to do in this situation and analyzing it all and stuff. So, right. Yeah, mm. So, yeah, you know, with this comment, it, it made me think about knowing yourself, right? Because, you know, I was thinking why why do i say something like that like most people are mediocre i feel like it comes from a place of uh, trying to be self-aware and trying to understand um myself okay so by knowing yourself you're going to know what you're good at and what you're bad at and because I'm, i try to be very honest with myself about both okay and some people might say like no no like uh, what you're good at like just be humble and i just no but like come on just be real just be honest you know, like, yeah. like, you know, when, uh, like Omar bin Abdul Aziz, when he, they were pushing him to be a leader, right. And he was rejecting it. Right. Because why is it? Because genuinely he believed there must be better people than him because he's, he is humble, but yeah. he also must have understood that he does have it in him to do a good job. He must cool. have understood that. Otherwise it would be his duty to completely reject it. But eventually yeah, he, he did take the position. So I feel like, um, we need to have that balance where it's like, I know what I'm good at, but in order to ground myself and stay humble, I also know what I'm bad at. So, so that's what I try to do basically. So when I say that, um, I don't know, like you Faisal, if I say you suck at X, Y, Z, right. I'm also going to be very honest and say, you're sick at X, Y, Z, you know, yeah, yeah. you're very good at it. And yeah, because I try and do that with myself. Now, maybe a lot of people, you know, I understand how people might take that wrong because I'm being so straight about it. But I guess it comes out my mouth that way because I'm like that with myself or I try to be. Mm. So, for yeah, example, yeah. like you said, I'm, I'm not that good with the emotional intelligence and the nuances of um, language and these kind of things. Um, yeah, like I just, I just asked you now how to write this email. Yeah. In it. Like because I know I'm not, I, could, I could say things. I mean, which, the email that you wrote was functional. 
Yeah. But it, it was just stripped of the emotion that sometimes you need yeah. an email to get so, the... Yeah, so that's actually a good example of, like, I, I, I kind of understand I suck at certain things, and I'm willing to say I suck at certain things. And I think mm -hmm. that now gives me the right, maybe, I don't know, to say, okay, I, I'm admitting I'm bad at that, but I, I also can see from, like, real experience, not just, you know, dreaminess and uh, that or, or ego, that I am actually good at that. Like, surely that's <laughs> fair, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, and look. Uh, ultimately, what you're do what you're trying to do is that look. I don't want to live in delusion. I don't want to live in that in that state. I I I'd prefer to double down on the areas I'm good at. You know, it is it's when you're like 20, 21, 22, you're actually in this state where you don't really know much at all. You might think you do, right? Mm. So you actually need to get to know, you know, lots of different things, right? Um, and so you don't want to say, oh yeah, I'm not good at this, I'm not, because you need to just go and learn and try and this and that. But when you get to a certain age and, and you've decided on your path in life and all that kind of stuff, and you're happy with it and stuff, mm. it's actually not a bad idea to say, okay, you know what? I've decided that I am going to go go down this route. Mm. And so that doesn't mean that you, you turn down uh, training and development and things like that, but it's like, okay, you know what? There's actually, there's no point in me. Like for example, if, if you said to me, like, first of all, you go and learn video editing. Yeah, I probably could. Yeah. But do I need to with what I'm doing? No, I don't, I don't really need to. Okay, so no, it's another string to my bow, but it, the ROI is not really there. I don't really plan. It's not going to add too much value to my life and stuff. I'd rather double down on what I, I'm, I'm kind of what I'm focusing on, and I can hire for that if I need to. You know? Yeah. And, that, and there's no there's no harm in into the thing that. Mm. I, I I think what was interesting about that comment though, is that you actually didn't say, "Oh, uh, most people are morons," or or, or most people are mediocre, and I'm really good. You mm. just you you, actually, you, didn't, you didn't say that stuff. I think yeah. you would maybe. But it um, is implied sometimes, isn't it? Mm, yeah. Oh, maybe maybe that's actually that's a good point. Like, uh, because maybe in the past I've said stuff like that, and maybe I'm including myself among the yeah, mediocre yeah, 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 people. Yeah, that's yeah. But but <laughs> but <laughs> the <laughs> assumption <laughs> is that I, you're. I, 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 I mean, you, you said you yeah. said stuff in the past where. Yeah, like, oh, to be honest, like most people are like this and that and the other, but like you've included yourself in, in that description. I'm trying to think of an example, but you like you're not afraid to to, to sort of I, I, like I said, bro, you're actually someone who's actually I'm like, very self aware. I, I would say more so than most, like um because some people we we all like to live in hope, right? Or we always like to we, nobody likes to you know um like rule yeah. themselves out of anything. And mm. um, but I think what you you come to quite early on is. I've come to terms with okay, this is really where my area of expertise is. Uh, so for you, I would say, like I said, you're very data driven, very logic, um, uh, ana analytical. Um, you're very, sometimes you're very firm, and you add things to the point of stubbornness. Where you're like, mm -hmm. okay, look, this is what I believe, and I'm not really going to deviate, mm -hmm. and so, and so, and so, so that that's very, um, like right, is it right brain that's logic, right? left brain, no. Is it left brain? Or right? Yeah, basically, it's one run for his right brain, I think. Okay. Um, it's very on that set, side of stuff. So, what, what's the kind of antithesis to that? It's obviously it's all the creative, kind of fluffy, warm, all that kind of stuff. I mean, do, I would say that actually, I'm just, despite the whole logic stuff, you do have a good, good deal of creativity as well. So yeah. It doesn't mean that you, you're, you're, it's not binary, is it? It's not like, oh, I'm, I'm only this, so I can't have any of those elements. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think there's but, definitely like big weaknesses, though. Like, like you can't, unless you're like, you know, nobody sincere can say uh, that like, yeah, I don't really have big weaknesses. Like, like also like, oh, you can, if, you're, if, you're, if you're an interview and say, oh yeah, I'm probably just a perfectionist. So. <laughs> <laughs> Job interview. Yeah. Oh, 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 probably I work too hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but when you're being like honest with yourself, um, yeah. like if you're very good at something, there must be something that you're equally very bad at surely. Like, because there's balance in everything, mm, you know? So, so like what you're saying about me being like data driven and logical and this and that, like, that's great. Maybe in certain elements of business, not even all elements of business, yeah. but then it, it's, tr it could be tricky when it comes to your marriage or it comes to raising kids or it comes to, yeah. uh, would I, would I hire you for HR? Uh, I'm not sure. No way, bro. <laughs> yeah. Like exactly. I, I would, uh, I would, yeah. I'm saying this now, I'll put my stake in the ground. If I ever apply for like an HR job, then fire me, you know, uh, don't give me the interview even. So, yeah. So I think, you know, like, uh, you, yeah, you've got to know the weaknesses, but 
you know, when it comes to like your personal weaknesses, like putting business aside, for example, like you kind of can't ignore those things surely, right? Because those things turn into sins and stuff like that. Okay. So give me an example. What do you, what do you mean? So, well, like, I mean, if I, if I uh, let's say I'm a very closed person, which I'm trying not to be now, but I think naturally I'm a closed person. I don't share um, stuff about myself. I don't like to maybe be vulnerable and open and stuff like that. Now that's very bad for a marriage, right? And that's why, like I, I noticed that um, before I got married maybe, or just around when I got married. So I was like, look, I like if, if, I, if I want a decent or good or amazing marriage, I have to become good at this. So that's an area where it's like, no, I'm not going to just focus on my strengths. I have to work on this weakness. Yes, agreed. Mm. Um, and I think so there has to be a willingness and obviously an understanding that it could be difficult. But what I would, the most sure, important yeah. thing before that is actually um, you being self-aware enough to know that and to be able to communicate that. Because then expectations and, and you can manage expectations. So imagine like no, with your wife, I uh, talk to married and stuff, and you know that this is a weakness of your that you're, you're closed, and you're you're in, in your heart, you're like, I'm going to work on this, I'm going to make sure I'm yeah. better and stuff. But in the transition period, or in the in the like, you know, you're going to be the victim of you being closed a number of mm. times without her having context and understanding. That's going to it's going to lead to lead to fisticuffs, which you it could have um, been prevented if you just said, yeah. oh, I just just say no, I want to let you know that yeah. Um, when I do this, it doesn't mean uh, X, Y, Z. Um, this is, you know, I realize this is a kind of weakness mm. of mine. I, I'm, I'm working on it. And yeah. people are very understanding, mm. and you know, and, and anything can be accomplished through. Uh, through yeah, that's uh, true. Kind of so being like honest about, being clear that you understand it's a weakness, you're working on it, and stuff like yeah, that. Absolutely. That that will give allow people to give you a lot of. Um, you know, forgive you a lot, basically, because they yeah, understand that you're working. Yeah, it gives you a bit of leeway as well. But yeah. you know, like, it's like, it also helps you to, like, diffuse conflict. Okay. So, like, um, like, sometimes you get into issues or arguments uh, or, or or flashpoints, which could lead to arguments. Yeah. But first of all, it, like, if you know, okay, you know what, actually, well, my wife's, like, X, Y, Z. No, that's actually a I noticed that when she always she worries a lot about certain things, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. No, it allows you to, you know, hustle down for her. Basically, it gives you uh, the, to overlook uh, it. To right, yeah, to rationalize and so on. Because oh, you know, what, it's actually that's actually you know what she is. That's maybe what she's struggling with. You know, yeah, it's fine. No, I can I can overlook that. Whereas if it's something that it's supposed to be a strength or perceived strength, and then those areas we make uh, like mistakes are being made on. Then you think, hmm, okay, what's going on here? You know mm. I mean? And then you address it and stuff. So, yeah. And it's, I think it's a, it's a, it works both ways. This is one thing. This, that, you know, that's why, you know, I know it's a cliche and stuff, but the whole knowing yourself is the beginning of wisdom. It's honestly, it's so, so true. Uh, I remember speaking to a few scholars and stuff, and um, they were talking about like education and how, how you know, they were brought to like from a classic education perspective. So they said, look, the first thing that we were always taught when we were like seven, eight, nine, ten is uh, obviously, you know, is. Our, just our own tribe, our own history, get to know our people and and being connected to your roots. I was like, okay, no, that's good, but why is that so important? Because he says that, like, you having that connection and understanding everything, it just gives context to everything in your life. Mm. It kind of, because even things like the food you eat and why and why, you know, you're eating certain dishes and all that kind of stuff, it affects, it might affect, like, um, like how how ill you get on certain things or what you're able to handle and because everything's interlinked so he goes that you need to get this knowledge of self is one of the most important critical skills that is mm. actually criminally overlooked by you know like the modern day uh, system and stuff mm. it made me think of the whole like aspect of you know the new technology kind of coming out or it's going to come out eventually it seems of um getting your what's it called like your genome sequence or your dna sequence or something mm, like that yeah, so yeah. you understand what foods will work best for your specific body absolutely yeah 100 percent. and there's usually this guy i think on uh, on youtube uh he used to say that oh um the, the type of food that's best for you is for the region that you're from so he was a jamaican i think so you see, you see that so so uh, people who are from the caribbean should only be eating caribbean for you is that the, the, the what's causing all of this cancer and cells and all that is actually we're going to we're migrating different parts of the world and we're eating all this uh, mm. stuff that's not actually you're not it's not a part of your fitter basically it's not what you're you should be having 
which is quite an interesting way of looking at it. Yeah, yeah. I heard that, and it, it's interesting, but it's also confusing because what if you're mixed? What if, like, at what point are you from a place when it comes yeah, to yeah, the food? True. Yeah, so yeah, true. It's yeah. very, uh, yeah. Uh, so what, what, what about, yeah. One thing I wanted to say was, uh, you know, this, this, I found this, this topic quite uh, interesting in general because, like, I've worked a lot in the corporate world and um, like from my very kind of first job, you know, you had these personality type things that, you know, when you do a corporate away days, yeah. it's like the, the go-to activity, isn't it? Um, but I think when you first do it, you don't really appreciate it or you don't really understand it. So I remember I, I did it and I actually remember getting the same as what I got today. So, wow. when I, when I, when I, so it's exactly the same. But I remember, I, even, my, even my, my manager looked at it and I was like, oh, are you sure that's right? It doesn't seem... But what it is is that I think that those... Um, manifestations of those things were actually within me in terms of the way I thought but I hadn't I hadn't, I wouldn't fully express because you know in the you know, your first year or two of work you're trying to find yourself and what am I comfortable expressing and what am I not mm. comfortable so mm. well, that, that, that was quite uh, interesting because I, I, I'm I did that Myers-Briggs thing yeah and um, I'm basically I-N, INFJ which is basically the advocate you know so I'm always a guy who has to have a cause and you know, I'm always um, I'm, I'm quite creative and it's an yeah, activist. Yeah. Wait, bro, let's go, let's go through Myers-Briggs, yeah, because I wanted to cover it and I think it's interesting, man. So I opened, I've opened it up like what the each letters mean, yeah? So sure. Myers-Briggs uh, personality test is basically uh, a personality test you take, you could take it online at 16personalities.com. That's it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then you, you're basically at the end, you're going to get like a four letter uh, kind of, code of, of like your personality type yeah and each yeah. different combination of these letters will create a different type of person so what did mm. you say you are Faisal so I am INFJ I so uh, so the first letter I or E yeah I is for introvert E is for extrovert yeah so you're uh, introvert I think you know um, a few years ago like five six years ago I was an E and now I'm an I so okay, yes. I think maybe I was just being more honest about the answers that got me an yeah. I, to be honest. Yeah. So, uh, so you're, you're an I. I. Yeah. 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 Okay. And then what, what's next? N. N. So then N is the second letter is N or S. So yes. N is intuitive or, and then S could, or is sensors. Okay. Yeah. So uh, intuitive means prefer to focus on possibilities and the big picture and easily see patterns. You value yeah. innovation and you see creative solutions to problems. So that's mm -hmm. what you are. And then the other thing you could be is sensors. They're realistic people who like to focus on the facts and details Your and apply S. common sense and past experience to come up with practical solutions to problems. Also, it's like, it's like abstract or in the trenches, basically. Yeah, 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 basically. But you know, bro, I think I got N for this. What? I think, I think I did, you know. Um, it's, I don't know, bro. Do you think I'm oh, definitely okay, well, you, you, uh, you, you kill off my uh, belief in the system. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think I'm definitely uh, a, a S, yeah? Because definitely, man. I, really? I, mm. I mean, you know, you know what it is? It's very... What's the word? Like, there's some people who are in the middle or a bit, you know, like, oh, they could be either or and stuff. Mm. Um, you're, like I said, you're very... Uh, Focused on the reality and the facts. What you are and stuff. Yeah, for me, you exhibit all the behaviors of that kind of guy who analyzes and. Uh, okay, I might have to take take the test again, but then I, <laughs> I might like prophesize it into the result. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we so your I N and then what are you? F. F. So the next third. So the third not F, definitely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the third letter is thinkers or feelers. Yeah, so that's kind of obvious, logical, um, or you know what feels right. So I thought you might be a T, a T here, but I, I wasn't sure if you could you could be either yeah, way. It's interesting. I, if I would, I would actually classify myself as a thinker, but what this, this what this is more referring to is is your thought from data and logic, or is it from intuition and insight? No, yeah, what feels right. What feels right. So, so, yeah. so for me, I'm definitely one of them ones. Got instinct and all that stuff. Yeah. And then the other, what's the last one? That's, why, that's why I'm usually right, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe, bro, to be honest. <laughs> um, yeah, then the last one? Uh, J. 
Okay, Jay. So the fourth letter is a, you're either a judger or you're a perceiver. A judger, judges tend to be organized and prepared. They like to make and stick to plans and are comfortable with following most rules. <laughs> I don't know if you're really a J, bro. You don't follow rules. <laughs> So that's a, that's a J, yeah? Yeah, that's the J, uh, Jojo. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the other one you could be is perceiver, which is prefer to keep the options open, like to be able to act spontaneously, and like to be flexible with making plans. Mm. So definitely... Uh, I, I, I would have thought I was, I, I was that, to be fair. So that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think you're, you could go either way. Uh, you know, definitely, de this is exactly what I was looking for. You know, Muhammad, my co-host, he's definitely a perceiver. Like, he likes uh, spontaneity, uh, definitely. Mm. He appreciates that. And I'm like, I, can't, I don't know how more opposite I could be. So, <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. that's why you guys work well together, isn't it? Because it's the whole opposite. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And that's why, I yin, mean, yin and yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, honestly, that's it, and that's why that's why it works. I think partly, yeah. So that's I. Uh, that's uh, Myers Briggs. I mean, honestly, I find it. I did. Um, you know, Jordan Peterson has one. Um, oh yeah, that's like the the big five um, personality test. Is that the Hexco one? Yeah, uh, possibly. Hex is five, right? So I'm guessing that's it. So I yeah. took that. I actually paid for that. I don't know. It was like twenty, thirty dollars actually. Um, and that was interesting because it gives you a di different dimension to think about, like the big five traits. Um, yeah. But I can't remember my results, honestly. But it was interesting. Yeah, I, I did that one a few years ago as well. I remember with that, it was more, because it goes into quite a lot of detail on each of those five traits. It says, okay, so let's say, uh, I don't know, um, agreeability or agree agreeableness is one yeah. of the big five traits. And then underneath that, it's got different things. It's got, okay, are you... you Subcategories. Okay? Yeah, so catching and stuff, and then it, it scores you from like one to five. So it's like, okay, the yeah. median is you know 2.8 or whatever, mm. and then you're, you scored a 4.2, and, and that ranks you in the top 80th percentile. Yes, yes, so yes. You see where you're ranking and stuff. So, where do yeah. you need work? For example, oh, yeah, you know, I think I, I was on following the rules, I was quite high low down, I think. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. um, and, then, and then on some of them, I was, uh, I was um, above average and stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, one thing I think, uh, uh, two things that are very clear, I think, from that Hexaco test as well, and just from observing myself, I'm very, very, like, orderly and mm. assertive, okay? Mm. And those things, I don't consider them negative, but I consider them things I have to keep in check because if they become extreme, then you get yeah. problems, you know? Yeah. So I, I... the extreme of orderliness is basically OCD. And yes. being OCD is like so annoying. You become very controlling and, you know, uh, you become a nightmare, nightmare to live with. So uh, because only because of the fact I am aware of that, can I work on it? So that's the, that's the big deal here, isn't it? But, but you know, but that's, that, is that, that's the case for most things in life, isn't it? Is it that your biggest strength is your biggest weakness? Mm. Because it's about in terms of how far you go with these mm. things. So I didn't like, know, like, this is like a cliche that's true, isn't it? Yeah, it's for honor, isn't it? It's like, okay, I might be seeing someone who's like very, very creative, but if I go too far on that stuff, it's it becomes fluffy, abstract, like not realistic. You're not, you're not. Yeah. Um, no, one, like, no one can not, like listen tangible, to you. Not tangible. Yeah. Yeah, you they can't this, understand like, what you mean. Picasso, the guy who just you know, feels, the, you know, what it's all about. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so, I mean, I make money, money after I die. So. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, orderliness. And the other one I said was assertiveness. So again, being assertive, I think like there's no way I want to change that. I think that's really good. And I think um, P, uh, it's, there's a lack of that in, the, in this world. Like, mm. the, you know, the more old school people, they're way more assertive than me. And, uh, but, but it's like uh, we need like you need a balance of all these different traits in the world. And I feel like uh, at least amongst the quote unquote like developed countries, people's personalities have been very toned down, and so no one's assertive, and that's not mm. very good either, is it? No, hundred percent. But but also, you know, what it is. I also feel that again, I keep talking about fitra because it's so important. Mm. Uh, and from a, um, I think as 
humans and also as genders we have certain uh traits that we're more aligned to and stuff yeah so naturally um the man or the masculine kind of traits are to be um to, to like to, assert, to, to like to be assertive and 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 also the whole thing about orderliness i mean orderliness is essentially you're following orders you're following the law and stuff which has been given down which is actually our, our entire role mm, as mm. you know as caretakers of the world and vice chairs so that's exactly our purpose right. so you're essentially you're you're, you're acting in, the, in accordance with who you're supposed to be mm, yeah in my specific role you know but yeah, not sure. yeah not if i was someone else you know maybe if i was a woman being assertive mm-hmm. is is very difficult position to be be in for example if you have to mm-hmm. obey your husband but then you're like very assertive you would actually yeah, yeah. it would become a weakness for you at that point you know mm-hmm. yeah of course so, yeah yeah um uh what was i going to say man you said about uh being assertive um yeah, yeah we yeah. need balances of all these things in the world yeah you know one of the most insightful uh tests that i did i i did this um Certification when I was uh, uh, in, the, in my corporate job. Um, so, so I was, I was, as you know, I was, I was a buyer, and um, we did something called SIPS. So SIPS is the Chartered Institute of Purchasing Supply. It's like the the main certification. Okay. So as part of that, um, we did a it's like a personality test about deciding decide the type of buyer you are. Okay. Right? So it's quite, it's, it's quite it's like a Buzzfeed quiz, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, but it was, it was quite detailed. It was like a full full on yeah. day. Mm-hmm. And it was like, and, uh, because they were good. the reason why it was, it was interesting was because um, they did the test twice. One under normal circumstances and one under pressure. Wow, okay. Right? Yeah. So also yeah. they went quite detailed because they said, okay, right, who are you when you've got the, when you're in flow and you're like the, dom- in the, dom- mm. the dominant guy? Yeah. And who are you when you're under pressure? Mm. And, and because obviously they look at how what are the different negotiated styles that you revert to and stuff. So essentially, there was three main types, and the, the, the way they uh, did it was the red, green, and blue. Right, they did it in colors. Okay. So the red personality type was the guy who was the traditional aggressive buyer. You know, he likes to dominate. He wants to mm. win. Hard negotiator. Winning. Hard negotiator. Yeah, yeah, that kind of guy. Right. Then you had the the blue. He was very win-win, collaborative. Okay, how can we work together? He was that kind of guy, yeah? Mm. And then he had the green, which is very analytical. He was logic. Okay. He was, mm. Okay, right. So I understand what you're saying, but from, a, from the facts, the, the prices just don't match. I don't understand how we can okay. do it. He's, like, he's that kind of guy, basically, yeah. right? And, so, and then they had this tiny little thing in the middle called hub. Mm. Right? This is at the... And so beforehand, I thought to myself, okay, right, my style of buying is very collaborative i'm very uh, so I'm, I, I thought i'm blue all day long right um but it's interesting when i when i actually did it i, I was actually in the hub i was, I was right mm. uh, the balance between all three that means yeah balance to all three okay interesting. yeah yeah so was, uh, does exactly that mean you're the different. ultimate buyer oh well, there you go maybe well you said it not me but what was quite interesting was actually when under pressure yeah so yeah. some some so some people what they do they, they're like they might be reds yeah. Um, initially, but then when they're under pressure, they go to blue. They go to soften straight away. Mm. Some people are actually like blue, but when they put under pressure, what, what, what do you mean? You, all right, it's going to be like that. I'm going to go, 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 go aggressive. They become reds. Wow. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. Some people yeah. Become, so, there's, so I'm there's guessing like you, you were balanced, right? You're in the middle, but when you're under pressure, you have to go more towards one way. I'm guessing. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So which one do you think I went to? Uh, okay. Wait. So you you wouldn't go green. Um, I think red. I would say red. That's interesting. I, I went blue. Now, because the cliche answer would be blue, because that's yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's that's kind of how you are. But then I thought, yeah, sometimes you just got that little ego thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was my wild card choice. Yeah, yeah. So, but what's quite interesting is that the guy who's um, because what what they were, they were saying is okay, all right. So if you come across, so the idea behind this, right, it wasn't just to understand your own type. It's to understand, recognize the color that other that your opponent goes to. Okay. That's, that's the, that was the main point of this exercise. It was like, okay, right. So if you're going to be dealing with a guy who's red, these are the ways to win the mm. deal over him. If you're right. going to be dealing with a blue guy, okay, so so what his weakness is, is that he, you can actually assert your dominance over him. Right. He's not so these colors and stuff apply to salespeople as well. 
Yeah, essentially, yeah. yeah. Mm. So maybe if a salesperson is uh, red, you need to go green, right? To show him just by the pure facts of things that he's too mm. expensive or something. And so I'm going to say that again. So if, you're, if you're, your salesperson is red, like they're very aggressive and stuff like that, yeah, hard, hard sale, negotiator and all that. You go to green, you go to the facts. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, mm. exactly. I mean, mm. Yeah, exactly. Interesting. So it neutralizes them, basically. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Can't, you can't really argue with it. Yeah, exactly. That, that's exactly what it is. Wow, amazing. Man. You know, uh, the thing I just remembered I wanted to uh, say, because you, you talked about like um, uh, men needing to have certain traits, women needing to have certain traits to balance everything out, right? Um, I remember, you know, that book, uh, The Way of the Superior Man. Mm. Bro, he has, you know, he's like very, you've read it, right? No. No, Allahu Akbar. Okay. <laughs> so um, he is basically, he's like a hippie, okay? Um, and he wrote this book, I think, in the 70s, 80s, I don't know, yeah? Um, now, one thing I really like from this book is the way he, he gave an analogy for the masculine and the feminine, okay? He said the, the, the feminine is like an ocean, okay? It's, it's, it's out of control. Okay, it's a kind of a wild, spontaneous, you know, it doesn't have that kind of rigid order to it. It flows. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes it's stormy, sometimes it's calm. Okay. Yeah. And he said the masculine is is the boat navigating through that ocean in with you know towards a goal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like yeah. no matter the storm or the calm, you have to go towards your direction. You have to weather yeah. the storm. So I thought that that was honestly that was amazing, yeah. amazing analogy of, of like the different traits and the wow, just perfect. Yeah, Manny, that's, perfect. Very, that's very powerful. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it went to the, the analogy of your uh, Godduha or Lady Yaksha. So it's like, um, so the sun and the moon, mm -hmm. right? And they say that the man is the sun, like you know, that goes out in daylight and it's bold and bright and out there and all that kind of stuff. And, the, and by the moon, all shrouded in mystery. It's all okay. covered and it's mysterious and all that kind of stuff. So it, that's a, often an analogy given as well, isn't it? Between mm. the men and women and stuff that, I see men out, first of all, they're out during the day. They, you know, they are sort of, uh, their objective is you know, to be, um, to be doing a lot, a lot, of, yeah, a lot of the work and, and it's, you know, very prevalent and stuff. And mm. then the women are sort of, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, like it's actually it's, it's a whole it's a whole mystery behind women mm. and all shrouded away and all that mm. well. A bit in front of the camera uh, versus behind the scenes kind of thing. Yeah, exactly, There's many yeah, exactly. like analogies to it, to be honest. And even within men, you find different types, isn't it? Yeah. You find the people who are in the front of the camera, behind the scenes. And, you know, like, especially these days, you would imagine, you know, with like YouTuber culture and all this, it's like everyone would want to be in front of the camera. But the mm. truth is, um, it's, it's, it might be 50-50. Actually, it's probably going to be more people will be suited to be behind the scenes, right? But because of the culture that um, we have, it's like if you're behind the scenes, you're a loser, right? Because everyone's yeah, yeah. Um, hunting glory. And so yeah, we have yeah. people who are not fitting in to where they should be fitting in in, in the world, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. You know, you know what's interesting is that you can actually apply this um, from a, a macro kind of perspective. I think there's, there's this, um, again, uh, analogy I read once or saw once, and it was talking about the... Muslim Ummah in general, right? And he was saying that, oh, look, like, obviously, we're like um, a body, and if, ever, if any part of it's hurting, then the whole body's hurting, and all that kind of stuff. But he's saying that, look, the reality of it is, is that every single group have mm. got a role to play, right? And every single group are tuned a certain way anyway. So he says that, so for example, if you look at, um, uh, like, Salafis, for example, they're very orderly like i said very yeah. um driven law all that kind of mm. stuff. It's a very heart centric and and all, all those things and then even if you look at the the dibundis the they're all tablikis they're very okay with messaging they're, they're, they're doing a lot of the the kind of or they focus a lot of khidmat and all that kind of stuff then you look at i don't know um and and, and basically what this was this is actually was it um they look at who's uh, talking a lot about that even the sufis even when you drill down into the sufis yeah. There's different Sufi orders. So you have the Nakshbandis and you have the, the you know, all the different types and stuff. Mm. And even each of them, they're all talking about getting closer to Allah, but through 
their root or their version. So it was yeah. like, okay, so Rafun is choose to focus on Zikr, the Chistis folks choose to focus on Zuhud, I think. And so they suppress themselves. And, 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 and so it, it was very, very interesting that ultimately what it is, is that we all attend going towards the same goal, which is to worship God. And, but we're, we're doing it in um, a way that all of these ways are accepted. But, yeah, but, but, but the, th- the thing is that just like a company is not going to be successful if, if it only, only has marketeers or if it only has operations, mm-hmm. it's in the same way that Ummah is not going to be successful if, unless you utilize everyone in its own way. I thought that was amazing. Yeah, yeah. I mean? And that's why, you know, it's always, if, if, whenever I think of like being part of like a group, like having a label to myself, mm-hmm. it's almost like if I was to put myself into a group or a label, I can't do it because I must, I kind of feel like by definition, every group is emphasizing something and then neglecting something, right? Yeah. So it's like, in order to be balanced and not neglect anything, you almost have to like not be in a, have a label. You get yeah, it? I thought, yeah. yeah. But I agree, but you know, it's, it's, it's about understanding. So, you know, so, so a lot of scholars, mm. um, or, or a lot of scholars worth their salt, they, you, you ask them a question, and they actually say, you know what? It's actually better you ask someone else that question. This is my area of expertise, and where I've chosen to specialize and focus. Yeah. And yeah. you'll probably get a better answer elsewhere. And there's no, there's no. Mm-hmm. Again, that's not that's not actually a personality type question, but it's more of a, okay, look, you know. Um, mm-hmm. but it, I, I, I know this kind of goes against what, what I'm, you know, what I talk a lot about about general being generalist and all that kind of stuff. But uh, I. I think it's, it's, it alludes to what you said at the start, that look, what, uh, understand who you are, what your strengths are, and what your weaknesses are, and, and um, don't try and be all things to all men. Mm. You know what I mean? So, mm. Mm. Yeah, bro. Let, let's go to this uh, email we got, because this is the email that kind of triggered uh, this topic. I hope you kind of already covered a decent amount of it, but I'll just read it through. And... Um, We'll see uh, what new kind of answers we can come up with. So um, we got an email. This was a while ago, uh, but it was it was a good uh, recommendation for a topic to cover on episode. So uh, she says, "Assalamu alaikum. I just want to write an email to you both with a general topic suggestion that I would love to hear from a Muslim perspective. The topic is about temperaments and or personality types. I would love to hear your thoughts on how personalities play out in different aspects of a Muslim's life. Some things you may or may not want to explore include, okay, when is it appropriate to stick to your default mode? When is it okay to say, Allah created me with these set of traits? How do you differentiate between an excuse to say stagnant and impossible task of pushing against an unmovable brick wall? Okay. And then she says, uh, disclaimer, I'm not talking about harmful and un-Islamic traits like having a bad, un- uncontrollable temper or arrogance fueled by an unchecked ego, etc. So what do you think about that, bro? Like, when is it appropriate to stick to a default mode? And when is it, you know, should you try and grow and change? <clears throat> I think ultimately it matters on the objective of the situation. So ultimately, so for example, if this is a, in a relationship, a marriage, and you know if it's the case oh, i just want, i just want to win the argument i don't want to wash the dishes today and all that kind of stuff you know um okay it's again a lot of this stuff is short term long term and understanding um you know i, I think there's a lot of things that come into it, actually the first thing that comes to my mind is the whole uh is it seven habits we talk about the, the bank the, the deposits mm. yeah yeah yeah. The, like, yeah and all that kind of stuff so again you can you can default to your your mode uh, as regular as you want at the end of the day, but there's a time where it'll stop working, or it won't be. You know, it, it, you know it, it's not gonna uh, do you any good. And it's not. Uh, and, uh, every and just bear in mind, every time you do use it, it's it's gonna like maybe draw that other person a little bit further away and stuff. Um, and ultimately, if we if we if we understand that, look, Allah has created, and if I if I actually do something that's against my personality type, actually, Allah sees it as a, as a, um, as a sacrifice, or I'll, I've actually gone out my way against who I am mm. for, for this person. And how much reward yeah. will you get for that? For that, for mm. that, for that action. That's saved against who you are. That's a struggle mm. against yourself, isn't it? Mm. 
Mm. It's, it reminds me of the, I believe it's in a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ where he talked about the man who, uh, the old man who does zina, even though he's old. Mm. Yeah, and he gets a worse punishment than the young man. Yeah, so it's yeah. like, it's like, you, you know, Allah made you in a way where you didn't have to, you, you know, you weren't, particularly going towards that sin but you went out your way to go towards yeah, that sin. yeah exactly yeah exactly so yeah when it yeah. comes to, if it's not to do with uh, your any sin like that's what she said disclaimer i'm not yeah. talking about sins or anything if it's not yeah. about sins i think like pretty much always go to your default mode and uh, not just default mode though go to your strengths and become stronger and stronger yeah, yeah. um and uh, that's why i want to add to what you said before Faisal. like there are many uh different ways of thinking and different traits and all that's all balanced. Um, there's also many gates of Jannah and you can go into a different gate from different uh, type of Ibadah used to do, you know? Yeah. And I remember, you know, one of the companions, sometimes uh, I think it was, uh, he was being laughed at because he wasn't fasting. And he, he basically just said like, look, I'm, I'm not like, I'm kind of weak at that stuff, but I just love reading Quran. And when, I, when I'm able to eat, I'm not fasting, I read a mm. lot of Quran. So that's like my way of, you know, yeah. uh, going really. towards Allah. So it's, so yeah, you want to focus on your strengths if you're not talking about sins. But I think a lot of the times, of course, we have sins. And in that case, you know, I like the concept of going all in on your strengths and just like leave your weaknesses to the level where, your strengths are so big that the weaknesses don't matter. But we kind of can't do that when it comes to sins, you know? So um, yeah, I think I, when it comes to sins, you have to focus on, pick at them one at a time. Maybe that's the way to do it. So that bit by bit, you're breaking it down rather than going to war with 50 different tribes and then they all come back at you. No, go to war with one ha bad habit you have at a time, maybe. Yeah. You know, well, the one really interesting thing uh, that, I heard, and it was it was something along the lines of any type of deviance that's ever happened, it's always happened out of extreme extremity or exaggeration, right? Mm -hmm. So you're saying that. So, for example, you're talking about oh, you know, um, the, the the Christians obviously deviated because they exaggerated in their in their worship of Hazrat Isa and stuff, the, um, and and then the I don't know. The, and then obviously there's very various, various examples given, yeah. uh, and then it said that well even if you look at today, like when you look at I don't know, the way we think about sort of veganism for example, we're like so you know, the people who are, who are vegans I guess are so like enamoured and it becomes their identity, uh, the entire identity. Oh, this is who I am, and and they become very it's almost like toxic in a way and stuff, right? It's a whole and so I think the point of of mentioning that though, even though it seems a bit random, is that whilst this whole thing about doubling down on strengths and or, or going one way and and then like not to get the other we have to remember it's a, the islam is all about middle path and it's all about balance and stuff and so um you like doubling down like and embracing that twin it it could go too far and so we always have to remember that we have to uh, stay uh balanced on like for example if there's a, 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 a area of weakness Instead of saying, oh, okay, you know what, I'm never ever going to like master that and stuff. So like, there's no point, just let it go and stuff. That, that's not really good enough. Uh, you, you do have to do uh, maybe what's the, what's, the, what's the bare minimum that keeps you sort of semi-balanced. Yeah, yeah. I suppose there are areas when it comes to being a Muslim that you can't just say that's a weakness, right? Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, say, yeah. I'm just not good at reading Quran. You know, Arabic is not my first language. Like, you can't yeah. just give up on that completely, right? 100%. Yeah, yeah. But I suppose what, like, obviously, reading Quran, um, Salah, um, you know, understanding uh, the correct beliefs about Allah, these kind of things, you can't just leave, yeah? But when it comes maybe to, it's, it's your ibadah, you know, your actions of worship, yeah. some might come more favorable to you than others, yeah, right? Course. But even having said that, there are certain foundations, like, for example, I am an introvert. I'm not like that into socializing and stuff like that, right? Let's say. That doesn't yeah. excuse me from being great with my neighbor. No, of course, 100%. So that would be like, I have to go out of my comfort zone because as a Muslim, I must be good with my neighbor. And, yeah, and maybe absolutely. Allah will, re will reward me more for that because it's out of my comfort zone, you know? And, um, and also what it, does, what it also doesn't mean is that it means that our, like, right, let's say uh, the time, you know, if you have to attend a wedding or you have to socialize and you then 
like default to your honor, but what I'm, I'm true, I don't really like socializing, so therefore I should not attend. So you can't really, because this is where balance and stuff comes in. Okay, you know, there's responsibility and stuff that I need to do, or the sacrifice I need to make because I'm a, my wife really, really wants to go and you know what, I need to do it. Yeah, so, you can't, so, you so can't reject an invitation. So I think that this, like, is wisdom, this is where wisdom and balance is. is mm. You know, I, I always stick to those two principles more than anything. Okay. That, okay, you know what, am I being imbalanced or am I being difficult or, you know, that comes to mind. And then the whole thing of, okay, what's the, what's the wise thing to do? What's the right thing to do and stuff. So having that almost as a, as check. a bit of a framework or a check thing, it always, ha- always helps me, I find. Yeah, I think there's, so uh, there's like a kind of pyramid in my head coming about, yeah? It's like a framework for understanding. Like Illuminati confirmed, yeah. <laughs> It's <laughs> just a, a vision of a pyramid, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and like the, the top is missing. Yeah. <laughs> no, oh, <laughs> that's for another episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's like as a as a Muslim um, who understands, you know, you got certain certain personality, certain you know ways that you prefer to go. Um, you have the base of the pyramid, which is like you just must do certain things as a Muslim. Yeah. You must pray. You must have beliefs. You must do this and that. You must be good to your neighbor. There is a base level of socializing that every Muslim must do, you know, and Mm. like Allah has told us, like, for example, Allah told men, like go to the mosque, like at least once a week, if not every Mm. single day. Yeah. So when you go out there, you're going to mix with people and you're going to pray side by side. Like there's a reason for these things. So that even like Allah made praying, um, when you pray in Jama'a, you must come close together. Even like, there's no excuse for you not to do that if you're an introvert. No, it's like there's a base minimum that Allah has asked from us, all. Yeah, and that would, I think, that creates um, a certain baseline of balance in everyone. Because that's amazing. All, yes, it's a very good way of putting it. Actually, they're yeah. all like venturing in in that level. Then, on, when you want to build on top of that pyramid, then you can go towards what oh, you. Yeah. What you yeah, find to yeah. be more, you know, works yeah. for you. It's like that Mas- Mas- that Mas- 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 hierarchy of needs kind of thing. Mm. So to get to a certain like level and so it's you, these are all the things that everyone must do. Yeah. And after that, so you, if you want to transcend, then yeah. you can go down your own area. Yeah, that's that's true. Actually, it's like imagine somebody who um, they you know they get to that crazy level where they're just like, look, um, I do so much dhikr that I don't have to pray. For example. So because he's n- now negated that bottom like uh, baseline level, level, like his whole pyramid's collapsed now, isn't it? That no matter how much dhikr he's yeah. doing, he's gone now. He's yeah, fallen. Exactly. So, yeah. and, and it's like, okay. Oh, no, it's a very good analogy, actually. Mm, yeah, maybe we need to um, copyright yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it's like equally if I'm, uh, you know, I'm a great scholar and I'm teaching and this and that and everyone finds my uh, lesson so inspiring and they learn so much and all that. Um, but then I'm like neg- n- neglecting my family like to a mad level. Like, no, like you, you pyramids collapse now again. So uh, we got a handle it. We got the sunnah, isn't it? That's like so balanced yeah. and stuff. Okay, the next point she said maybe to cover... Um, in what ways can Muslims benefit from understanding their personality types? How can someone use their personality as an asset? How do personalities play out in our relationships with family members, friends, co-workers? I think we, we touched on a lot of this already. Yeah. Um, but, well, I would, I would definitely recommend that um, this checks out that 16 personalities as a, as a good starting point, because I have to say, I've, like I said, I, I've always found this topic quite interesting. Um, and so I've been I've a lot of different types of ones. Um, this is probably by far the most accurate uh, one I've seen, and they go into a lot of detail. Myers Briggs, yeah. Myers Briggs one, yeah. All, mm. all the way the sixty personalities I've done it, the way mm. that the write up is, etc. It's just, it's a, I remember a, a few years ago, I actually downloaded the full report, it was like twenty dollars or something. Oh. But it was like two hundred pages. Wow. But but it's really interesting because because what it what it, it takes you through is okay. So even so, for every aspect of your life, so as a friend, uh, so what INFJs really look for is that they they look for really deep connections and this and that. In a in a, a marriage partner, they look for X Y Z, and this is what you yeah. So even if you're on the marriage hunt, for example, understanding who you are might actually mm. help. Okay, you know what? what I don't want is someone who's very X Y Z, or yeah, you because know, this is often the problems that someone has in looking for marriage. Like they <coughs> they look for I'm looking for X Y Z A B C, and the reality is it's really hard to find someone with all of those those characteristics. So the best here is to flip it on its head. 
what are just the things that you don't want? Yeah. And yeah, and, and the thing that you don't want, it's, it's much easier to find, okay, this person is not, they're not annoying, they're not, they're not okay, yeah, yeah, they're actually, they're all right. And everything else, I can, I, they can grow. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh, practical ways you can use it as an asset, your personality type. I mean, uh, let's, you know, if you're talking about, you know, so like me and you, for example, outside of like work, let's say, or business, um, we, you know, most Muslims, they have some way they want to kind of contribute. Right. And th like, like you always talk about how you prefer writing rather than yeah. video. and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a way that you're going to, that's, that's just how you are. And, um, mm -hmm. you, like you, you can do video and you sometimes do video, but you, you're just going to be more the type who does that. And you can make it work for you. So for example, you're going to write a blog post, let's say. Yeah. And you could get someone else to say, look, can you uh, be the face and do the videos? You know, can, can you turn mm. this into a video? So you're doing what you're good at. So that's how you yeah. could leverage it as I think as well. Um, as for myself, yeah, like, I don't, the, mm. yeah, the, the other thing as well is that when you know what you are and what you're not, then you can ensure you can fit the gap, fill the gaps. Because mm. by partnering and working with people who have got the skills that you don't have. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, one thing I've I've, 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 um, I've been working with Mohammed for a long, long time, and one of the things that he's very, very good at is, as you know, he's that he's he's very good at, at the whole speaking and the whole mm. commanding presence. Whereas I know I've always been the guy kind of more behind the scenes and writing and stuff. So we're kind of opposites in that sense, but at the same time, our values are the same. So yeah. having the same values is very, very important, um, even if your personality types are different. Yeah, yeah. Same values, same principles, but different kind of ways of manifesting that in the world. Yeah, exactly. And the truth is, like, although Muhammad's like uh, all out there and getting the glory, if you like, in the end, like deep down, you know the contribution you're putting and you're putting yeah, in exactly. a 50 percent or more contribution to that end kind of result, isn't it? So sometimes yeah. it's like it's not about getting the glory it's about just knowing for yourself that i'm doing what i know i'm best at and that's enabling that person to do what they're best at and exactly. in the end allah knows it all and the reward is is there whether you get the glory or not you know yeah. and i think that that goes a lot i always think of the uh, the the example of mothers who do so much and they don't get glory especially in the, in the modern day kind of culture where mothers are like what the hell man like they've been mm. uh, mistreated in the yeah. way people look at mm -hmm. them when but the truth is allah knows what they've put in allah knows what they've exactly. put in exactly yeah yeah okay. and like like but, allah says so many times in the quran that on that day on yom al no one will get like uh you know oppressed or um everyone gets an absolutely fair judgment because allah is going to bring everything out even yeah. the stuff that you didn't get any praise for in the dunya you know so uh, I, I think that that's a it's a it's a bang on point. Uh, I just my point I was going to say that was very interesting link to that. No, don't worry, carry on. Okay, uh, okay. The final thing she talked about is how can we better accommodate people with different temperaments in our communities slash Muslim utopia. How can we better accommodate people with different temperaments? So, okay, so well, I think there's a really good example of Yakin, you know, Yakin Institute. Yeah. They did this, I think they attempted this to an extent. Um, they did this spirituality quiz. No, what's your spiritual personality quiz? Okay. Do you remember that a few years ago, last year? You told me about it, yeah. Yeah. So, they, again, I think they, uh, it was someone who did a similar exercise to this, to all these Maya Briggs and stuff, or trying to get an Islamic kind of version of it. Um, and it, it, it was quite interesting. Obviously, I asked you certain questions, and okay, so some people are either those who uh, enjoy the good and, and forbid the evil. So they like very speak out against uh, oppression. Mm. Some people are more like building grassroots and stuff. Some people are more like, oh, I'm an intro introspective. I'm just learning. And so, right. it, so that's, that's quite an interesting thing that, okay, to understand. Um, like, firstly, I think that everyone needs to get to know themselves somehow. I think that's, that's, that's an important thing as, as the first port of call. Um, and I think if it to become more in the general, uh, more in the wider public, that it, it needs to become a more of a you know, like mainstream you know, thing to do. Mainstream, yeah, exactly, because uh, like it's it's very sort of not re not re not really spoken about unless it's spoken about in the corporate world. Actually, uh, you know, 
but I think it is becoming more and more popular. So there's like popular workshops out there now doing all about knowing yourself. There's, I think, you know, Mugger, I think I've put a purpose course out and stuff. So a lot of these people are starting to, to, to get into it and don't, are starting to understand the importance. Because mm. when you start looking at the challenges of youth and stuff, a lot of people are lost and a, a lot of people are like, mm. you know, they don't really know where to turn and stuff. And the, tri- the turning, uh, basically, they're very malleable at that point because, and you can basically turn, turn them into anything. You can take them any direction. And that's why sometimes people fall in fitna or they go into the hardcore in their career. But it's because we're not introspective. We're not actually, some of it should come from within. Mm. And what um, an amazing, like, again, an amazing teacher would normally do is, okay, you know what? This person's aptitude is, this guy is a thinker. You know what? He, I need to really help him address those kind of challenges. Oh, this guy's an engineer. He builds and he does. And, and if they can extract, and they can just set you on a course. And it's, it's like, and you know how we're supposed to reflect on the signs of nature? Like trees, you know, this one types of trees, the tree that gives light and, no, no, the tree that gives shade, sorry, and the tree that gives it's medicine. Fruit. Mm. It's fruit and stuff. Yeah, everything, every, same human, every single human is about purpose. But what are we doing to understand what our own purpose is? Like, mm. I think that, that needs to happen early on. Mm. Amazing, yeah, true. And um, but what about what about accommodating for other types then, other people different to us, Yanni? So yeah, but that's the thing. If yeah, if it became a mainstream thing, uh, and a conversation that you can have is, oh yeah, by the way, I'm a X Y Z or whatever. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, so yeah. It, it, it just becomes it, it becomes something that you're then very mindful of. Okay, okay, you're you're the guy who who's um, you know. Who's courageous? Okay, I better. Or oh, you're the guy who's that who has an Umar type. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's true. Yeah, and I guess you got to understand. Uh, sometimes you got to leave space for people to say those things, isn't it? Like, yeah. give people op- like if you don't know someone that well, you say, okay, let's say you're in some kind of volunteering situation. Yeah, would you prefer to do that kind of thing or this kind of thing? And mm. you've got to be observant, and over time, you're going to realize. You know what what they're like and this and that so i guess it's about being aware being observant and just sometimes when you're also when you're concerned for people truly and and stuff then you remember as well oh i remember they were like that and they they made that choice last time and i think yeah. that's a real like leader especially they're like in tune with the people that they are overseeing if you like they're in tune with these like little details like you said the teacher is the teacher should be like that like aware of the d- different things, the weaknesses you might have, the strengths, this and that. So, yeah. well, what, what I'm going to give you a really a practical example of it, this playing out recently. So, mm. about a couple of months ago, one of my friends, he asked me to like, conduct some interviews for him. He was actually hiring a, like a personal assistant. Is that like, the first time he's hiring and he's, like, the company's expanding and stuff. Uh, and so, um, so I did it. It was a short list of CVs. I had like, a hiring day. Uh, so, I, I, I did like sort of a few interviews for him. But but one thing I, I ensured everyone did was filled in the personality thing, mm. right? <laughs> the sixteen personality. I was like, oh, so, so you know, that's the end of the interview. If you just spend like you know, 10, 15 minutes just filling that in, and he just thought it was a pointless exercise. Oh, I lost the point, man. Like, what, what, what are you doing that for? You're just wasting time. And I was like, no, no, just just trust me and stuff. And so, um, so uh, when when lo- I looked at Mall at the end of it. Ultimately, there's one standout candidate. She was like amazing, the, exactly what he needed. I probably wanted a little bit more money than he wanted to give, but with that aside, it was exactly what he needed. And the personality type, uh, and by the but what? But he he was going towards a different way. He was like, I don't know, I don't this one and this and that. Mm. But when it comes to the personality type, the one that he wanted was a very commanding kind of personality, right? And the one that I liked, or the one that was a standout candidate, was a consul. So a consul is someone whose entire identity is aimed or like the happiness is centered around making other people happy or making wow. other people mm. making other and, that, and that's what the whole person. So everything from that per- person uh, was was exactly the way it should for that role of that person assistant. Yeah, role. yeah. Because yeah. um, your assistant other, is assistant you, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's helping. Basically, she wants you to be successful, and that's mm. how she gets her, her fulfillment. Whereas mm. With the the other one, he actually did go the other way. Yeah, because he said, oh, "I understand, it, but I want to." Uh, got my own blunder, and bro. Blunder, big time blunder. Big. I was, I was like, I can't believe it. 
I was head in hands. Like, why am I here? Why, why am I? <laughs> but anyway, it's his own, own decision and stuff. Mm. But like, I, like, but also knowing his personality type, he's someone who actually does prefer to be the main man, the control, and this and that. So I think it's only a matter of time before them them guys are mm, like, having okay. trouble. Yeah, or mm. or the, the supposed to lead and stuff like that. So, but that's why, but that's why business, you know, getting the right person, getting the right fit, the, it, it's uh, it could be as uh, yeah, understanding people is such a critical skill because the business also got relationships and in the day and long term and all that kind of stuff. So, it, it's mm. whenever anyone, anyone said this is just fluffy or something important, I would say that it's actually the most important thing. Mm. Yeah. Maybe the maybe it comes second to values, isn't it? You got values. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, and uh, even I, just, I remember, you know, Half Hour Dean, you know, that website. Mm, half Hour Dean, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I remember they had a whole personality test thing where it's okay. like to, to find compatibility for marriage and stuff like that. Um, and my I think, it's important. I think it's genius, man, because it's such a, obviously divorce rates are going up the roof high and stuff. Like, why isn't more people, more and more people, like, why isn't this stuff? more mm. out there you know mm. it could help avoid problems yeah it's it's kind of my thing because it's like data driven way of picking a spouse <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um but i do think i do think values is the number one thing <clears throat> when it comes to marriage and yeah, yeah. personality chemistry these things um i don't know i see them more as nice to haves when it comes to marriage that is yeah but mm. um yeah I, I can see how it could be really useful you know when it comes to like but like how would i like let's say i know i'm like very orderly like that's how i am so if if my wife is not orderly that might make me like uh drive me nuts and try and control her so that wouldn't be good and then if, but if she's also orderly we would feed each other and both become super ocd so i don't, <laughs> I don't know which you know what would i do with that yeah, information this is, this is this is why 100 percent. so this is a very very interesting point mm. that if you get someone who's exactly like you, that's actually a problem for the kids because yes. you, 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 you've got two, two of the same mm. extreme and they, they, they are also then going to be a multiplication of what kind of what you guys are. Wow, and yeah. So, if you, so, so actually, this is why the whole opposite attract is actually has got some truth in it. Like, so if you're super orderly, you don't want someone who's super disorderly to, to clamp to the balance. You don't want that because okay. that's going to drive you crazy. Okay. You want someone who's left of center essentially who's who might, who might be only a little bit orderly or a little bit disorderly right got it yeah, 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 yeah. so, so not the absolute other handle. extreme no, no exactly yeah so you're, if you're if you're if you already know you're one extreme on that front um then you go someone who's okay neither orderly or disorderly middle or a little bit towards you yeah a little bit towards you a little bit even a little mm. bit the other way a little bit but it's not enough to annoy you to the point where you're going to divorce her mm. and stuff very I mean, good. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Uh, the, the other thing about uh, dealing with other people based on personality types and stuff is, you know, I, I think about a lot of these you know, like debates and arguments between people, whether it's online, whether it's speaker's corner and stuff like that, is that sometimes, these, you know, as I've maybe matured in my thinking, you've got to kind of have this level of empathy and understanding that other, other people think a different way to you and stuff. And also people are operating based on different contexts and different information to you. Yeah. Okay. So if somebody is saying something that, wow, I'm like, whoa, isn't that like, isn't what they're saying dodgy? Isn't that like bid Isn't that like, you know, I might be thinking this yeah. And maybe that's true, but before you get to that point, you kind of got to take those things into account, isn't it? It's like, okay, maybe they see it in a different way maybe they got the same information as me but they're seeing it a different way because of the way they see the world or because the way <laughs> they are you know the personality type um but then it's a bit of a, a dilemma then because the truth is one right but um so how do you kind of deal with that you know no but so this is this is the art of influence isn't it so it's like okay i know that this person responds they see the world this way and they respond to X, Y, Z. And so, okay, I want them to do what I want. Right. Okay, so how can I communicate what I want mm. in a way that... Speak to them on their level, on their, on their level, length. on your level. Yeah, because yeah. you're, 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 you're trying to influence uh, someone who's, let's say, uh, intuition and, and intuitive and all that kind of stuff with logic, facts, and data. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I'm already closed off to what you're saying. Mm. And the way you're saying it is... Well. interesting yeah 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 so for example like somebody is coming with the i don't know um 
let's say somebody's saying um, music is halal because oh I, you can make so much music but you can benefit from it so then you can see that their angle is like benefiting people and making the world mm-hmm. a happy place and all these yeah, kind of things yeah, yeah. and you might be coming at it from the fiqh point of view like this is haram because of this hadith and this and that yeah, and maybe yeah. they're not too aware of the hadith and how fiqh works and stuff yeah, so yeah. by you hammering them with the fiqh it's not going to change their mind but if you say how uh for example oh you know if uh, the world would be a better place. It, imagine it'd be even better place if everyone's like into Quran, and they can't be yeah. into Quran if they're into music because the two can't fully coincide yeah. in the same heart. Absolutely. So you're you're coming to them at their level. Yeah, that's like yeah, yeah that's communication. Yeah. Like that's, that's not even one on one. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I thought that. Yeah, or, or the or, or argument could also be that. Yeah, I completely agree. It is, it is actually because you have to all the green with your prospects. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. It actually, could be very, really, very really beneficial. But then. Uh, what do you call it? It's the same as alcohol. Alcohol can be really, really beneficial, but then mm. the harms that way. The, and so yeah, it's yeah. like, what, what are the harms of music? Have you ever considered them? Okay, but yeah, what it's led to X, Y, mm. you know, so it's like, oh yeah, okay, I, I understand. Because because actually you didn't disagree. You actually, oh yeah, there is, there is a, um, there could be good to it. Right, but, yeah, um, yeah. The, the, the so you're taking them to your destination, but mm. through their path. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Through their vehicle, maybe they chose, you know, they chose yeah, yeah. the motorbike, you chose the Jeep or whatever, you know, and you're trying to pull them onto the Jeep. But why don't you yeah. just get on the motorcycle, go to the same place with them? Yeah, mm. Very good. Okay, bro. Um, what, what's our closing remarks or anything else you wanted to bring up that we didn't bring up? Mm. No, I think I think I'm gonna be, we discussed quite a bit, quite a lot. I, I mean, like I said, I, I took some of this stuff quite seriously a few years ago because I wanted to really, you know, how the whole getting to know yourself kind of thing. So not only did, did I do all this first time stuff, I even did the whole um, what's it called? You know, those DNA tests, what they called? Um, yeah, uh, tw- ancestry and yeah, twenty three yeah, and me and all that. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so it's all okay. It was like, let me understand like, where about. Uh, I mean, it was it was, it was probably uh, uh, it wasn't very insightful at all. It was just okay. You're like. 99% from Pakistan or India or the or Pakistan India region. I, thought, <laughs> okay. I, knew, I knew that. What do you mean? That's not helpful. I thought you might go into really, oh, you're from like 12% from the, this region and then 15% mm. from this region. And so I'm like, but uh, that, that was very helpful. But, mm. but this whole, um, but you know, the reason why I kind of went down this kind of route was um, it's not just heritage, it's not just personality types, it's even things like energy. I know people think, oh, we only have phys- this physical energy and so. Actually, there's mental energy, there's spiritual energy, there's emotional energy. How do all of these things play uh, out for you? So like, you might be someone who, I'm, I'm always full of energy and stuff. But actually, when I'm depleted of, of emotional energy because I've not been listened to and this and that, I, I, I cut a frustrated figure. Out. And how do you cope with those moments and stuff? So this is why there's this whole game to know yourself. It's actually on so many different layers. And mm. I would say the person type is like, almost like layer one. Mm. And, you know what I mean? And so this is the, I mean, that's what I'm, I'm sure this is all a different, it's, it goes, it's, it's happening in different kind of worms and stuff. But as I'm saying, there's, there's a lot into this subject because the, the power it has, it can transform the destination of your life essentially. Like you know who you are and yeah. you know exactly where you need to get to. Right. All, of the, all the vices that I'm, I, I know how to discipline myself against them now because I know this well. And all the, the things that I'm really good at, okay, I'm going to double down on them. Are you, I'm going to get there quicker. Mm. So this whole, this whole, ultimately, this is a journey of self-mastery through, and, and, and knowing yourself gets you there quicker. Even, you know, the way you just made me think of the way that you uh, stop yourself from certain sins mm. um, would be a, even bad habits, sins, whatever, would be reflective of your personality type. For example, yeah, some people they don't like the idea of blocking themselves away from websites. Let's say you spend too long on Instagram. They, yeah. they don't like th- this idea of locking yourself out and, and yeah, going yeah, cold yeah. turkey. It's a whole restrictive, oh, no, no, I'd probably be free and flowing. Until yeah, free. something like that. Whereas me, I, I really embrace it. So maybe that's somewhere a way I can improve is stop forcing that on people. Like not forcing, but that's my only, that's my go-to answer for people. Maybe yeah. it's right, wrong. I don't know. But, yeah, but, but this is, this is for me. This is a whole thing about coaching. Like when I think that a mistake that a lot of amateur coaches do is that they tell people what's worked for them. Oh, so this is what you must do, and you mm. need to become like that. I, I don't know. One, what this is the most insightful 
not the most insightful, but one of the most like, insightful uh, comments I ever had was from my brother, and mm-hmm. it's about going about ten years. I was trying to try to coach him, and all that kind of. And he says, after about three or four sessions, oh, please stop. I was like, what do you mean? He goes, when did you realize I'm not you? I was, no. I was like, whoa. And he was quite like, because he, he's quite a quiet guy, and this and that. He doesn't, he doesn't have outbursts and stuff, but he said it, and it made me like, oh my God, he's right. I, like, I'm a guy who loves content, and I, I listen, I read books, and I'll do this. And, and I was mm. giving him the same stuff. Oh, you need to make, if you haven't done it, I'm going to, but actually, you know, that was the wrong approach. Mm. And to, but obviously, as you mature with time, you realize, okay, you know what, can I make, um, then go through the transformation, but on their terms or how they mm. will be it best. And this is why you need that. This is where the whole multifaceted approach you having, you know, you know imagine a, a mom who understands all four schools of thought. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And you can tell, so you can, that's that, the, you know, that, that's the level to get to basically. Mm. Sick. Sick. Yeah. To close, I would say, because uh, we didn't mention some of like the purely like Islamic things, like, you know, Allah says in the Quran to, you know, I can't remember the exact ayah, but wafi and fusihim afala taqilun. You know, don't you see the signs in yourself? Mm. So that that requires obviously this is in order to believe, but beyond believing, when you believe now, still look inside yourself. Look for the signs, of course, mm. of the amazing body and, and all that that Allah's given you, but also the diversity of people's minds and personalities and all of that. And uh, also Allah tells us to look at the uh, you know the different tongues and colors that Allah made you in and mm-hmm. obviously personalities um, and then also I remember the ayah Allah says uh, let everybody work in a way that uh, is fits him is appropriate for him kind of thing mm-hmm. so there is encouragement of this and we can see also the way the Prophet ﷺ dealt with different companions in a different way depending on their how they were their age their this their that and also his relationship with them you know the closer the, when they were closer to him and maybe they're a more they're a quite a tough character he could be harsh with them knowing they would take it okay you know, mm, and of course, it would be the, the opposite example as well. So it's very much based in Islam. And, you know, in order to stay balanced within your personality type, of course, the, the barriers is the sunnah, basically. And I think the Prophet ﷺ knew that what he does is sharia. And so that's why he didn't make everything like oblig, oblig, obligatory on us by always doing it. He gave indications that this is just recommended, you know, yeah, so... Yeah. Uh, those are kind of the boundaries. Like if you don't, if you go beyond those, okay, now you become extreme in your personality. But within that, it's good. So yeah, bro, thanks for the conversation. I think it was really good. You brought a lot of insights that I, I wouldn't have thought of and stuff. And I'm quite conscious that the first like third of it was too much about me and like my flaws and strength. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I hope I hope not. I hope I didn't bore people with that. But obviously, it's maybe it's a, a trigger for people to think about themselves as well. So yeah, may Allah <laughs> Yani Yeah. I think uh, what, what people should do is I write Sorry if I saw repeat that, I lost you. Wait, so now I'm recording again. So what should people do? <laughs> I guess uh, in, uh, in the comments, you should write more of uh, Amin's uh, flaws so you can make sort of future episodes out of it. And it's also good every, every episode a flaw. <laughs> Very humbling. Uh, uh, now, this, this is going to be my T60 review for you, I think. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Okay, bro, Jazakallah khairan for joining me. And inshallah in a future episode. Um, do you want to plug no at all? Yeah, so Alhamdulillah, we, we uh, uh, have an organization called no, kn-ow.com. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel called youtube.com uh, forward slash official no, kn uh, And so obviously we're all about um, 
uh, obviously education and we believe that everyone's got something to teach, everyone's got something to learn. So on the platform, you can create courses and create content. Uh, and what we all, what we really, really believe is uh, trying to bring about a, a second golden age, essentially, through uh, a lot of the things that we, we mentioned already. Um, because obviously that's the time where um, people were, were thinking and, and they were using, they, they saw learning about the world as a form of worship or love. And so that led them to, you know, amazing uh, achievements and stuff. So I think that's kind of what we're, the future we're trying to push and trying to encourage this whole concept of lifelong learning. So uh, um, inshallah, you know, check, check it out and uh, we'd love to get you on board. No, no, your personality. Okay. Yeah, that's it. That could be a future course, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Okay, bro. Inshallah, we'll speak again next time, maybe on another topic. Uh, thanks everyone for listening. Uh, as usual, go to mus- uh, go to mindheistpodcast.com to find out how to contact us either via email or Curious Cat where that's anonymous. So you can give us your comments, your feedback, um, suggestions, uh, mention more of my flaws, uh, all of that stuff there. And uh, yeah, thanks everyone for listening as usual. And yeah, subhanakallahum wa bihamdika, shadu an la ilaha la anta, astaghfiruka wa tubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I don't know.